Hi guys, this is Joe Neville and this is the first in a new video series called BGP In Depth. These are going to be short videos starting with the basics and the key principles of BGP and building up to more complex aspects of the protocol. So these might not be for the BGP experts out there, more for those with limited exposure and wanting to get some hands on. I'll be primarily using Comware devices and I'll be running all the examples on just my laptop so you can recreate them, play around with them yourself if you wish. Um, hopefully we can make this interactive so please do comment if there are any aspects of BGP that you would like me to look into in future videos. Anything that you would want that you wish covered, just let me know. Okay, so why BGP? Well, in the past, uh, BGP was primarily the routing protocol of service providers, but over the years it's been adapted and there's been additions made to the protocol, which means that its scope has greatly expanded. BGP offers unmatched level of control and filtering of its updates, and that has lended it towards it becoming more and more popular and applied to different areas of networking. And we're seeing it become increasingly pro popular in the area of the data center of the move away from the layer two uh, spanning tree based data center fabrics towards more controlled, more filtered, more automated layer 3 data center fabrics. So here is the setup that I'm going to configure. As I mentioned, I am going to be running this on my laptop. It's just a Windows 7 laptop and I'm going to be using the HPE VSR, so the virtual services router um, configured on VirtualBox to create these three BGP speakers, two in one AS, uh, AS65001 and another one, so this VSR 201 down here is going to be in AS65002. Building the VSRs on VirtualBox or another hypervisor, if you will, is pretty simple. I'll just show you my setup. So here you can see I've got three VSRs. This VSR 101 operating system is other Linux 64 bit. It's got uh, 1024 base memory. And for the networking, so another important part, what I do is for the first interface, I have bridged my wireless NIC so that I can expose them to my home network and use DA assign IP address via DHCP so I can putty onto these. So this is essentially the management interface. Then I have a couple of adapters which I've applied to the internal network setting and I've given them um, a designation there of one and two. So you can see on the other VSR 102, I've given that to in internal networks as well. And there we are on VSR 201. And that essentially builds this network for me. So first of all, let's log into VSR 101. Now I have configured this basic IP addressing on the interfaces. I've configured BGP on the VSR 102 and 201, and we're going to step through the basics of how to bring up the BGP peering session on VSR 101. So once the config's on there, then they will come up. So you can see the sessions that we'll configure. First of all, I will look at the connection between VSR 101 going off to VSR 201, and that is an external BGP session because we're in different ASs here. Here are two party sessions to the VSRs that we're interested in. So VSR 101, I'll show you the IP addressing. So gig one slash zero, that's my, my management interface exposed to my home network. Uh, two slash zero, that's off to VSR one zero two. And three slash zero is off to, that's the one we're interested in, that's off to VSR two zero one. I'll show you the same on the other side. And it connects to, so on this side it's gig 3 slash 0 that we're interested in, and on the other side it's 2 slash 0. So hopefully we can ping across that link. 
Okay, and we can. Good, so we're ready for BGP. Just briefly checking back with our network design, we need to configure this eBGP session across here. So our AS65001 needs to go off to 65002. And what, what we'll be configuring is a directly connected BGP session. So it's just going to be using the other end of this slash 30 as the source and destination address for our BGP TCP session. Here we go. So, first of all, BGP 65001, and I'm using loopback 1.1.1.1 on this device, so I'm going to use that as the router ID. I'll put that in first of all. Now for the peer statement. So, as I mentioned, this is for our BGP connection, it's directly connected, and we are going to be going to 10.150.1032, sorry, dot 2, and the AS number is 65002. Okay, so the peer statement's now in, but with the more modern versions of BGP, you actually have to tell it what type of prefixes to exchange. So in this case, we have to say that the peer is going to be an IPv4 unicast session. We want to exchange IPv4 unicast prefixes. So we need to create an address family. So here is an address family. And you can see that the different types of prefixes have different types of sessions. And this is one of the real powers of BGP that it can send prefixes from different types of IP protocols. But to start with, we're just going to do a very simple IPv4 unicast session. So we turn on that address family, and now what we need to do, we have the peer session, but we need to activate the peer within that address family for it to come up. And before I do this, actually, what I'll do is I'll make sure, because I'm logged in via SSH, not on a console, I've turned on terminal monitor so that the um, updates when BGP comes up, you'll actually see it. Let's go back in here and we'll go to our address family IPv4 unicast and we put in our peer and so we've got lots of different options that we can figure but first of all we we'll just do the basic and that's that we turn it on we enable it okay uh, I skipped ahead um, slightly there took a about 10 seconds or so to, to come up. But as you can see, our BGP session has moved from open, confirm to establish. So the state that you want to see for your BGP sessions is established, not active, which is like a really uh, basic novice mistake when they're looking at BGP and the different aspects of the state machine. We want an established session. If we look at the other end, This session, as I mentioned, I've already configured the rest of the network. Um, so this has got two sessions up. And the one that's just come up here just over two minutes ago is this one here. That's the one we've just configured. OK, great. So there is actually some more information that you can see here. There is a verbose and you get a lot. And this is the thing that I was saying about all the different filters and the tweaks, the amount of information that you can get from BGP is a grade beyond any other IGP or any other routing protocol. So you can see a huge amount of information here. So we've got um, our peer here to dot two, that's our local address. Um, we have, it's an eBGP link, as I mentioned, because it's between ASs. Then you have lots of information about the different timers and the different address families. So this is very interesting, the address family that we've configured. So you can have multiple address families configured, which we'll do uh, in a later video. But in this um, instance, we've just got V4 unicast. Then there's some stats about the messages that are sent and received. And then these are some interesting stats about the maximum. So all of these things can be configured about the amount of prefixes that we can receive. Um, 
different types of capabilities that are all received and some more complicated things here like site foraging, any routing policy that supplies. If we have any filtering on, that will show up here. So that'll actually show us more about that in a different video. Let's take a look at the peer command. Okay, now again, and this throws some people, it makes it seem quite a bit more complex. You can't just put in display BGP peer, you actually have to say the address family of the peer that you want to see. So there's no option to just hit enter with peer at the moment there that they used to be in the past you used to be able to just put in show me the peers but now you have to specifically say what address family so we put in ipv4 and there's our output so just running through there we've got the local id that's us our local as number of peers we've got one we've got one in an established state good and this is the details about the peer we've got the remote as amount of messages that's not prefixes received that's the amount of messages that have been exchanged we've been up for just over a minute and our state is established at the moment we're not exchanging any prefixes unlike your IGP such as RIP or OSPF you won't just start sending um, updates you actually have to tell BGP what networks to advertise specifically with the network command Okay, so our session's up, let's advertise a prefix. So what I would like to advertise is off of my VSR 101, I'd like to advertise my loopbacks, which I have configured. You can see it's this loopback 1111. What we do is on the VSR, we go into BGP and we configure a network statement. Now it needs to be in the address family. You can see the network command there. So we have to specify the network and we have to put the mask length that we want. If we put the wrong mask length, it will not advertise the prefix. So the mask length is a slash 32, it's my loop back, so I need to put that in. If I put in a different mask length, then it will not advertise. So we put in 32. Actually, before I do that, what I'll do is on the other end to show you, I will turn on a debug. Now, if you've got console access to the devices, by all means, add on debugs. But if you do not have access, if this is a remote device that you're logged into, I would be wary about adding too many debugs to a box especially with BGP because of the huge amount of update that you got that you received so it can be quite hard to break into them so the debug that we're going to put on is debug BGP update remember that you need to do a term on and a term debug so a TD will turn on the debug output for us back to a VSR 101 We've got the network statement. I'm just about to put that in. And then immediately, actually, on the other end, you can see. So let's just step through what we've got here. We've received an update from VSR 101. Here we go from this IP address. And you can see that there's information in there, such as the origin. So these are the AS pass. So these are BGP attributes, which I'll deal with in a later video. Very important is the AS path, the and the next hop, so that's where it came from. And also here's the prefix. So it's the 1.1.1.1 slash 32. Let's look back at the originating device. Let's look at its BGP routing table. See that what we see in there now. BGP routing table. And again, you need to put in the address family. So IPv4. And here we have the number of routes local router ID, sure, we have these status codes, so there's quite a lot of information and I hope you can appreciate the fact that with BGP you can have a huge amount of prefixes, lots and lots of information in there, so it can be quite confusing to read one of these when it's fully populated with hundreds of networks, hundreds of prefixes, but if we just take it slow, have a look at some of these status codes, they're essentially like a, the key, it's your guide to what you can see, so the key parts are 
the network column over here. So that, that's your prefix, that's the destination, that's the one that was locally uh, generated. You can see the next hop because it was locally generated, so it's telling us that. Now very important are these two aspects here, these two, so the asterisk and this arrow here. Now if you look at the key, you can see that that means that it is valid. At a simplistic level, that means that we know about the next hop for that network. So you can have networks in the BGP table that are not valid. So you can receive an update, but you don't know, the device doesn't know some key piece of information that it needs to actually make it a valid route, which would mean that it wouldn't have this star next to it. Um, also, very important is this, and that means that it is best. So what that comes down to is that if you've got multiple updates for the same prefix, BGP will choose a certain amount for its best route. And in this case, we've only got one prefix, so we've just got one best route. So, so that means that this is a valid prefix, and this is also the prefix that would be, this is the path that would be taken to this prefix. Now, we have the BGP table, and then that will pass on the best routes to the routing table. Now, if we look over the other side, here we have this information, local router ID, etc., etc. There's the prefix. We can see the next hop. Now, the next hop obviously is not the loopback because it's received from our neighbour. It's received from 101. So the the next hop is the IP address of 101 that it was learnt from. We also have information such as we've got the AS path in there. So the fact that it came from AS path is an attribute, it is used to stop routing loops and what it means is that when a prefix is advertised the local AS is added to the update and then it's advertised out. So we can see that this in the AS path we've got 65001 that's where this prefix came from and also we've got an extra uh, piece of information which is E and that means here that it is external okay so these don't get confused with the origin the origin is for down here that is the, this designation here, I, which is that it came from an IGP. What we're looking at here is that this is an externally learnt uh, prefix because it came across an external BGP session, an eBGP session, so it actually marks that on there. If that came from an iBGP peer in the same AS, then it would have an I next to it. Okay, so that's our prefix. Now you can see a bit more information about this if we go into the specific prefix. You can see how much information is actually exchanged about these prefixes. We've got the different next hops. We've got the, there's the AS path. So this can be a bit easier to read than when you've got this table. But obviously, if you've got lots and lots of prefixes, then the table means that you can read through it very quickly and see what's your best, what's what's valid routes, etc., etc. So I hope you found that useful. First of all, we did the simple configuration of an eBGP session, and then we used the network statement to inject a prefix into BGP, and we had a look at that prefix in the BGP routing table. So that's it for now. Please do like and subscribe to the ABC networking channel, and I would be especially interested in hearing from you if you've got any comments, if you've got any queries about BGP, or any topics of, around BGP that you would like me to cover in future videos, please comment. But that's it for now. My name is Joe Neville. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.